More shots fired! Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. Alright, guys, welcome back. Another episode of the Moto Aftermath show here. We are wrapping up High Point Race now. East Coast, baby! East Coast! We were getting ruddy. It was it was ruddy. It was it was aggressive. It was, it was. super aggressive. Mm -hmm. uh, track was pretty much completely new. There was very little in the uh, way of the original High Point track. Very fast paced in some spots. Very fast paced. Lots of big hills. Scared the shit out of me. Did you? I peed a little. <laughs> it's totally fine, but I peed a little the first time I saw it. Uh, uh, but yeah. typical High Point though. Yes, very uh, slick, greasy, muddy. They had a lot of rain yesterday. Um, track. tracks a camber. Yep, and, but it did shape up nice. Like no, I said in the practice report, I was waiting to see how it shaped up race-wise. Shaped up just fine. Good racing, multiple lines, so I thought that was great. Um, and again, no lack of action from nope. either class. The parity in these classes is unbelievable right now, and I'm totally in love with it. Unless you're in 25th spot in both classes and you just ride around. Well, yeah, but we won't get we won't get into that. We're not getting into the privateer. We're not we're not going privateer life on this. So oh, we could go privateer on part two. <sighs> Anywho, we'll bust in to the racing starting now. All right, four fifties. Let's talk about them. Bottom up. Bottom up. Do you want to go through moto and moto or overall? Ass up, oh, okay. That's the way we. Anyway. What? Are we doing overall or are we going moto? Each moto. <sighs> Let's talk about the overall mm -hmm. and then we'll talk about anybody who wasn't in the overall but who finished in the top five. Okay, well then, Coop. <laughs> he's built. Hey, he's building. He's, he's building. building. He's doing a he's lot better, better than the first two rounds. I still think he's pissed. He's not riding his 18 yet because they yes. were really, really trying for that. Because he'd rather ride his 125. <laughs> what do you want to ride today? 2017 YZ450F or you want to ride your fucking 1999 uh, YZ125? 125. 125. I'll take the 125. I'll take it. It I'll might. Take it. It's not faster, but for anyone who hasn't better. seen, there was like a week there, like uh, between it was before the break. Glen Helen and Thunder Valley. Yep. That he didn't ride his his actual bike at all. He rode a 125 all week at an overgrown arena cross track. At an overgrown arena cross track. But anyways, anywho, uh, yeah, no, Coop looked good all day. Looked yep. good in practice. He looked good through both motos. Mm -hmm. um, didn't pull off. Actually finished. Bike didn't break. Didn't seem to crash. That we saw anything major. So pretty much from fifth to eighth speed wise all day and uh, going to his favorite track. He, yeah. Pretty much his home track, the one where he got his uh, well first overall of the year last year yep. and. Uh, Made that, you know, impressive comeback on Shane McElrath on the last lap. But uh, it's good. I mean, he's not where he wants to be. Everybody knows that. But all he can do is build and just anything you can gain confidence out of. Do you think he puts it on the box next week? Uh, home overall? Track, home track. He's excited. Uh, or just a moto? I'm going to say a moto. Um, If he puts it on the box for a moto, I'm going to say he puts it on the box overall anyway. Because I don't think you're going to see him have issues like he has the first few rounds mm -hmm. here where he goes like 428 or some shit like that. Um, but yeah, so do you think yeah. he puts on the Okay. I think, actually, no, I'll go I'll go one better. And I say he gets, if he gets on the box, it's going to be third. I don't think he can do anything better than that right now. But I think he is going to be amped up. Pretty much his home race, the track he can ride with his eyes closed. You know, he's, he's done well there in the past and stuff. And I think... Uh, I think he's going to come in with a little bit of extra motivation. You know, he's going to, his family's going to be here, or family's going to be there and stuff. And, um, yeah, I think he can get on the box and stuff. I think that, you know, he's, right now he's a little bit far off the pace of everybody knows who the top two guys are right now. But, yeah, I think he gets on the box overall-wise and stuff. But I don't see anything better than third. Okay. But, hey, you know what? It's, anything's better than those first two rounds. Oh, so, God. Oh, God. You know, I know that people can hate on him and stuff, but it's it's true. Anything better than those first two rounds. Pretty much. So, all right, let's move up. Fourth place overall, Eli Tomac. Okay. I would say a rough fish. It was a mixed emotions day mm -hmm. for him. Uh, you know, first moto, good start, which was great. He dialed in. <laughs> he must have gone to, uh, what's McGrath's dad's name? 
Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. After <laughs> after the incident at Glen yeah. Helen and stuff. He must have gone to start school with him because yep. he had two great starts. He was in the top three both uh, mm -hmm. both starts, pretty close to hole shot in both motos. Um, first moto had a little issue, pushed the front end, going up a hill halfway through the first lap. Yep. All the way back, literally got up on this hill and was last. So. Yep. I mean, what are you going to do? He came back to, what was 11th or something? Uh, yeah. yeah, no, no, 12th. 12th. He didn't get around Nord on the okay, last Okay, yeah, so he came back to 12th in the first moto. Second moto came out and just dom and bye. Gone. See Gone. you later. Baggett started to catch him, and Eli basically said, no. No. <laughs> Absolutely not. It dropped like two, three, four seconds a lap off his lap time. When Blake so. got into second, it was eight seconds. He made up a total of a second. He got it down to seven, and then it was 15 at the finish. And yeah. Contrary to what Blake said, that he let him have it. Let's be real. After the comments he made, and anybody that hasn't heard it, go watch the Pulp Show from right after Thunder Valley. I didn't watch it, so it was. Yeah, it was the one after yeah. Thunder Valley, after he got his. Go first back and win. listen to it. And I'm probably sure anybody that watched practice today saw what the comments were or heard them, I should say. Um, Eli basically went out and said, hey, dude, you know what? You got your first win in the 450. Good job. But uh, I've been doing this a little bit longer than you, and I'm still the big dog around the campus. So Yeah, because, I mean, I'll give it to Baggett. He looks really, he looked great really in that first moto. good. Mm -hmm. um, he didn't even look bad the second moto. No. But, man, he Eli was, was on a mission. He's got nothing for yeah. it. When, you know, short of Eli hitting the deck, which I know he does all the time, so I'm not... I'm still not off the off the wagon of Eli is going to hit the deck or win by 20 seconds because mm -hmm. that's pretty much what he's been doing here. I know he had a brake problem and they've pretty much, I guess, fixed that mm -hmm. issue. Hopefully, because if that happens again, somebody at Kawasaki needs to go. Probably multiple people. But anyway, <laughs> um, so yeah, but uh, yeah, no, he's, uh, yeah, when Tomac decides it's time to go and he doesn't, you know, catch a rut and hit the deck. Yeah, there's no, there, no. And like we talked no. about, his three most favorite tracks of the year are, are coming, coming up, up in a row. Yes, you got fucking Muddy, Muddy Creek, Creek, Red, Red Bud, Bud, Southwick. Southwick. Mm -hmm. So, we'll see. Good luck. Yeah, good luck, guys. <laughs> good luck, especially at Southwick, because we all know what he yeah. did last year, so it's probably going to be a beatdown uh -huh. this year. Because Kenny, who can ride a sand track pretty decent, he made Kenny look stupid last year at Southwick. Yep. So, so, anywho, let's move up onto the box here for our... Uh, for Third. the 450 class, third place, what? Brock Tickle, baby! Woo! I love this guy. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I mean, Very Brock, impressive ride today. It's like we talked about in the preview show and stuff. You know, Brock is always kind of sneaky fast. He got a couple, you know, fast qualifiers in last year, like two of them, I think it was, and it just kind of shocks you. are like, where the hell did that come from? Because Brock is always a consistent 5 to 10 guy, maybe 6 to 12. And today he was just feeling it. I mean, he was definitely off the pace and stuff, but... I mean, he got great starts, top five starts, both motos and stuff. And, you know, when he was pressured, he never faltered. And even when Ando got around him and stuff, he latched onto him and stayed with him for a good four or five laps. And then it kind of inched away. But Brock did what Brock did. He put in consistent laps. You know, just kind of not flawless, but just uh, going through the motions. He He's not Tomac and Baggett speed, mm -hmm. but you get the... Uh Pretty much your your third through next tenth, two guys. tenth place dudes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's he's right up there. So, uh, like I said, very impressive ride. Second moto especially, he was up there battling with uh, Tomac with Tomac for the lead there at the beginning of the mm -hmm. race, and then obviously faded off. Um, but yeah, wow, I <laughs> pumped. How many more times do you think he does that this year? I don't know, because he has this weird thing of like he'll build, mm -hmm. like he did it in Supercross. He built up and he did pretty well there. He busted in the top five for a while, and then all of a sudden, boom, he falls off. And he did it last year in outdoors too. He built, 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 got a few podiums in a row, and then boom, gets hurt, and that's it. So if he can go without that hitting the wall mm -hmm. and, and hurting himself, man, I don't know. He could, you know, he could be, you know, up there on the box. Week in and week out, I think. But I mean, do you think if you were to give it, do you if you were to give it a number, would you think he did it more than twice again this year? I would, yeah, I would say maybe three or four times if he can not Cause he, get hurt. Because he's all, he's good at Muddy Creek. That's where he got mm -hmm. his first fast ball last Creek. year. He's, he's good, good at Redbud. Red and uh, not so much Southwick. He hasn't really ever been really healthy come Southwick and stuff. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think he can do it again. He's just because he's so consistent. Yep. He he's so consistent. He doesn't he doesn't push the limit and ride over his head. But he's never one of those guys that underwhelms you and stuff where, okay, you know, he just settled in too early. So, I mean, great for him and stuff. And, um, yeah, he's he surprised the hell out of me, I'll tell you that. Yep. So, so all right, moving up, second 
overall for the day, Jason Anderson. <laughs> yeah. Kind of a surprise. Oh uh, uh, yeah. He had a mixed mixed bag of a day. You know, he went down and freaking practice. He went down. Did he go down the first moto too? I think. Uh yeah. He went down. He collected with Bogle when Bogle yes. decided to kick his yes, bike. Yes, that was it. So it's kind of a shocker to me that he got second overall. I mean, I guess he did go uh, five three, so not bad. But it just it plays into the parody of the class. Mm -hmm. Like you go five three and you get second overall. Like when has there been a year, you know, in the last six years that you could do that in either of these classes? Probably well, since, especially the four fifties. Probably aside from Carmichael and Stewart, the early two thousands. Uh -huh. That's about it. Yeah, it just it's just amazing. So, you know, like I said, five three um, went down. Bogle was not too pumped on him in the yeah. <laughs> in the first moto. Uh, but whatever, you know, second overall. Let's be honest though. Great ride. Both motos, though, he got the beat down put out of him. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's... And I mean, so, like, it's it's kind of it's kind of like what we talked back in Supercross at the end of the year when he was consistently getting on the box and stuff. Like, he's happy, but are you like, uh, I'm yeah. kind of, I mean, dude, he got beat by 41 seconds. Yeah. So, so I mean, uh... like, honestly, a question for you, because I know how I feel about it. If you're him, are you, like, Hey, this is good, or am I like, okay? No, I'm I'm uh, beating myself over the over the head with a hammer, trying to figure out why I'm 41 seconds behind everyone else. And honestly, I is I hate to say this for him for his sake, it, everything's working right for him. He's looking good. His technique, he's a little. I mean, he's always got the erratic style and stuff. He's looking like he's forcing a little bit more these days than normal. Um, but the bike looks good. It's it's just it's straight up his speed's not there. Well, the thing and I don't is, really know what he can do. It's weird though, cause like he was fastest qualifier today. Yep. By like 1.8 seconds, track he did was faster. Change, the track did change a lot. Yeah. But I know what you're saying the track so did change. It's like, but his speed's just not there. Yeah. Like it's, there's it's weird. He, he's, he's not he lacks it in the race. And he's not gonna pick up four seconds a lap either. No. Cause that's it was consistently between two and a half and four seconds a lap slower mm -hmm. than Bla than Baggett and Tomac. And, man, I just don't know where he's going to pick that up. I don't know either. I, I don't think he can. I, I mean, know. he's kind of asserted himself as the third fastest guy yep. consistently now. But, man, if you're if, if I'm him, I'm just like, dude, what the hell do I got to do? Yep. And it's, it's and his starts are even good now, too. Oh, yeah. So he like, was right up there, too. So, yeah, I, I don't know. He's got a long road ahead he, of him. You're so. happy, but you're really pissed, too. So Yep. So And then first place overall on the day. Blake Baggett. Yep. Gets a first overall. Points leader. Points leader now. What is uh, it, 10? Yeah, I think he's 10 over Marv and 11 mm -hmm. over Tomac. Yep. Um, and again, first moto, went out, mm -hmm. dominated. Second moto, looked great, mm -hmm. but had nothing for Tomac. Nope. Despite his he comments. He is, yeah, he's definitely, and he, again, he fired more shots on the podium. He was like, I gave him that second race. I decided I didn't need it, and so that was it. And it's like... I don't know. I, I walk this fine line with him because I like the confidence of the cocky part. But, but it's going to reach a point where you're going to reach the a tipping, tipping point yeah. and I'm going to go, all right, you're just a dickhead now. Like, Yeah, it's unnecessary because he never did that in the 250 class. No, and it's like, r realistically, and I'm going to make this comment about all of his comments from the past two weeks. Mm -hmm. You haven't done hardly anything in one your over, career. Well, you, two, you've got you, you've got one well yeah, two now. Okay, so we've two got overalls. two overalls. You got two moto wins, and you won what one outdoor title in the two fifties or did you two? Win two? He won you won two. two outdoor titles in the two fifties, mm -hmm. and you're going to talk all this crap to a guy, even if you take his Supercross titles out. Tomac won one or two outdoor titles in the two fifties. He won. One. 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 But it was that year that him and Kenny went back and forth. But okay. the thing is, is he's already into the 20s when it comes to overall 450 wins for yeah. Supercross and Outdoors. That's the thing is he has so many more. And as far as Supercross wins go, he just dominates him in Supercross wins. Like Baggett's barely been on the box. And has he ever been year. on the box in Supercross up until this year? And now you've got two outdoor wins. Like, dude, Tomac just blows you out of the water number-wise. And then you've never dominated, like, Let's not forget if we're gonna if we're gonna talk shit. Let's not forget 2015 mm -hmm. for the first five races of the year where Tomac won by a minimum of 30 seconds plus mm -hmm. over Ryan Dungey and Kenny was in there too, right? Kenny yeah. and even Stu and, and he, yep. yeah, everything. Yeah. So and, you know and and one 
by a minute and a half at Hangtown. Mm -hmm. Like, lapped all the way up to, like, fifth fucking place. Yep. So, you know, if we're going to talk shit, like, dude, you got to take a step back and go, ooh, what am I really doing here? Because, obviously, Tomac's hearing it. You're going to wake the bear at some point. And we saw what he could do in Supercross when he got pissed off mm -hmm. and was like, I need to go. He went on a roll. He won, what, fucking nine out of ten races? Yep. Or something like that? Like... I don't know. I don't, I don't know that I would poke the bear that much. Honestly, I've never really liked Blake. This I'm not going to get into why. I've never really liked him. I just know things about him off the track. I'm Like I said, I'm not going to sh throw shade to him or anything. I just never liked him. I'm happy for him that he's finally settling into his 450 career. He's killing it. He's one of the hardest working dudes in the world when it comes to riding a dirt bike for a living. I like his new compound. It's yeah, great. the thing is ridiculous. It's, it, well, it's a fucking compound. But I'm at the point that if he keeps talking... Like I told you before the race today, if he comes out and he wins, awesome. You can talk all the shit you want. But if you don't go out and win, and I know he got the overall, but he got his ass handed to him, you don't go out and win, it just makes you look dumb. Now I know that we've had more people over the years that have done this. You know, a lot of people will come to mind with when Chad Reed was at the top of his game and Stewart, and even Ricky a little bit, you know, guys like that and stuff. You know, people, they talk and they like to get in their guy's head. But that's the thing, like... Dude, when you're getting obliterated by 15 seconds, like, you gotta shut your mouth. And don't, oh, I gave it to him, like, I get it. If like, he, well, if he talks all this shit and doesn't win the title, he's gonna look really dumb at the end of the year. Yeah, and I just, I... Now, if you talk all this shit and you win the title... It's okay, whatever. I mean, there's some people that'll say, hey, shut your mouth. It goes back to what Kenny was last year, all the social media st stuff. Yeah. People like, hey, dude, you need to calm it down a little bit. But uh, Kenny wasn't even this. Like, Kenny wasn't just like, oh, you know, people this and that. Like, I just... I like the confidence and I like the swagger, but dude, like at some point, if you keep talking, you gotta you're you getting gotta close up. to that line. Even for me, who is a shit talker, you're getting close to that line where I'm like, eh. because there's what? But see, that's the thing though. There's shit talking, and then there's just straight being a douchebag. Yeah. And the comments not like beating around the bush, like saying, "Oh, certain people's dead." Like, dude, really? You got to bring John into this? Yeah. And he was even throwing shade at the fucking Elton Baker compound, like guys that have never won championships and they latch on to do. Which he needs to be careful because if something happens, he ends up on that. Yeah, <laughs> that like, dude, team, you like... you just can't throw shade at everybody in the class, man. Just because you get what, your second overall now, I just. I'm happy for him, cool, but dude, lay off the shit talking. It's pointless. Like, really, let your ride and do the talking for you. Yeah. So, so anyway, let's move on. Couple other people who did two. pretty good. I'd uh, say the number two guy, the first moto. Yep. Uh, Dean Ferris comes over. Whoa! Qualifies great. Uh, second, the first moto was battling mm -hmm. for the lead for a while. Looked phenomenal. Heat got to him. It's off season for him. It's really. winter. It's winter, winter back in down, Australia. Yeah, in Australia. So, you know. Good on him for going for getting second that first moto. He's the real deal though. Oh yeah. He's the real deal. He is. If he came over and actually trained and rode here, I think I'd say he'd be top be a three. contender. Yeah. yeah so. I don't I don't think he'd be winning championships, but I definitely think he'd be top three. Yep. And then the other guy, um, the only other dude up there that we haven't really talked about yet, uh, Josh Grant, mm -hmm. third in the first moto. Yep. Again, looked good. Um, second moto. Didn't look good, but nope. you well, know. And Marv. And Marv's well, issue. Yeah, well, we got to get to Marv, but <clears throat> Marv, well, I think we can kiss that Red Bull Outdoor title goodbye. <laughs> yeah, I hate to say it, people that are, Marv, that are Marvin fans that watch this show, but uh, I mean, uh, if you haven't, I mean, you heard it, torn meniscus and stuff, anybody knows that that is not. I personally know that it sucks. And I've never had one, but I have knee issues. It's not fun when you're dealing with that and with as gnarly as the class is, and Good on Marv. He rode great that second moto. Struggled the first moto. Got six yep. second moto. He battled through on probably one of the gnarliest tracks to have to not be able to use your inside leg for an advantage. Yep. Um, but if that is really what it is, is a torn meniscus, it's, and that's it's pretty an much issue, done. yeah, the season's over. It's not going to get any better. Like, no. he's got a two-week break to Millville, but okay, say he goes in and he gets some of it scoped and stuff and, you know, cleans up a few things. He's off for two weeks, misses a... He's still, like... Yeah, there's he, just there's not enough time to have surgery and recoup. No, not a knee. And not then it's gonna keep getting worse. Yeah. Like wait till we go. Wait till we well wait till Red Button two weeks and then Southwick in three. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, dude, Southwick gonna really is gonna bad. suck. It will it will not surprise me at all if after we get through Southwick if things are still if he's running eight to fifteenth place every mm -hmm. race if they go pull the plug. That's it. We're done. 
And they, and actually, well, because Trey, they figure, is coming back either next week or the week yeah, after. Yeah, but dude, he uh, can't even make it through the week. So well, I, Yeah, but at least, they'll, at least they'll have somebody under the tent, because that's the thing right now. If they pull the plug on Marv, they have no one under the tent until Trey comes back. And then, so it's like they may have to go out and try and find somebody. Who are they going to find or hire? I don't know. Call Dean Ferris. I'm sure he'll come over. Yeah, I know, that. right? Just, dude, hey, dude, we'll uh, pay. Yeah. We'll pay we'll for everything. We'll just pay. But, uh, Good on him, but, yeah, it's it's over with. He's, yeah, he's, 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 he's not winning another no race. Way. He's not winning another race this year. If he does, it would be literally the title win of, like, the century to win with a torn meniscus against Tomac and Baggett but, the way Baggett's riding right now. But the now. thing is, it's not going to happen, no. though. Like, that's the thing. Like we can say that and stuff, but that we I can I can say for certain, and I know he probably feels the same. It's not gonna happen. No. Like it doesn't matter. You can say all these what if games. Like it's just not. It's not going to happen. So nope. as much as that sucks, you know I'm not a Marvin fan. I I, I he's kind of grown on me, but it's over with. Like yeah. let's be real, guys. It's it's done. So yep. As far as I'm concerned, ride through uh uh what's it called Southwick there. Yep. You know, just just get through that part of the season, get Trey back so there's someone under the tent, and then just pull the plug, go get your knee fixed, get ready for next year. And it kind of even sucks. I know this is ways away, but it kind of even sucks for Team France coming up at the MX oh, Nations yeah. with as well as he was riding. Not that that matters to any American, but my point is that sucks for even them because, yeah. you know, that could have been their top guy. But either way, bummer for him. I am bummed. That does suck. But you know what? That's just that's racing. So. Yep. So, and that's our thoughts on the 450 class there. Okay, let's really talk about it though. <laughs> uh, so overall, let's start fifth overall, Alex Martin. You want to go first or? Uh, yeah, sure, I'll talk about Amart. He had a uh, really good second moto up until about eight minutes to go. Mm -hmm. um, wheels came off. Yeah, well, pretty much my concern with him is his fitness level isn't there for the whole moto for both of them. Yep. Um, he looks pretty decent in the first motos, comes out the second motos, guns blazing. like. It, Today, perfect example. Gets the whole shot and he's out front, literally yep. leading, and with 10 minutes to go, just starts to fade. It's even kind of like the first moto Thunder Valley when he won. Like, he still, like, he got a start, sprinted, got a 10 second gap, and then Forkner and J Mar slowly just reeled him in and stuff, and it was like two seconds at the finish. And yeah. Yeah, no, I know what you're saying and stuff. It, uh, he pushed hard that first moto to get seventh, but man, the, the wheels came off and they came off hard. Well, he's got to learn because I've heard, I can't remember if it was Glenn Helen or which what one it was where he was trying to catch somebody and he told he told the reporters he was like I was trying to catch him I couldn't and I wore myself out like dude you gotta pace yourself but you can't do that you like you have to have all of it in the tank to go with five minutes to go see here's the thing about the 250 classes it's never been this close I mean literally there was one point that first moto where I think first to tenth was within a straightaway of each other like yeah eight seconds the thing is, is that all these kids, like, and Amart's not even a kid. He's been a pro for a long time now, but he, so he should know this. Like, you need to learn to pace yourself, but you also need to keep in the back of your mind that even if you're eighth and the thing is to get gung-ho, like, oh, they're getting away, like, I got to sprint now and close the gap. Like, dude, even if you settle in and just mark guys for a few laps and, okay, you kind of do this back-and-forth thing, if you're in seventh or better at the 25-minute mark, like, just pace yourself because you can guarantee two dudes in front of you are going to make a mistake and either go down or lose a bunch of time. Now, I know the whole goal is to win every race, but if you know that you're struggling after the 25-minute mark and your fucking arms are just drained and your fucking heart's beating through your chest, like, just settle in and be like, hey, you know what? If I settle in and take the 7th or the 6th, it's not the best thing in the world, but if I just keep running my pace, guys are going to make mistakes. Because it's going to happen. It's the 250 class. I mean, look at that second moto. Mm -hmm. So, great for him. Third in the point still. But, uh, man, he, he's got to get something figured out because he's just, the wheels are coming off and they're coming off. Like, it's not like, hey, he's losing a spot. Like, he lost three spots. Yeah. And, and again, it's not like he's out of title contention. No. He's still up there in, like, the top five in points overall. But... Dude, you gotta you gotta learn to pace, and you gotta learn to be able to leave it on the table the last five minutes plus two laps, not the middle ten minutes of the moto. Which is weird because last year he it wasn't that way. But yeah, so I don't know what's changed. Yeah, I don't know if he's changed his training regimen or what, but he's got to get it figured out. Yep. So moving up to fourth overall in 250 Frenchy. class, Frenchy Dylan Fernandez. Impressed. Imp Impressed. Through, no, through well. <laughs> Best comment from him all day is telling Georgia Lindsay. This track G is not a GP track. 
well. Everybody, that's all we hear. They think because of how closest hard packed and camber. Oh, yeah. It's closest to a GP. Closest to a GP. It's not Unidil. And he just laughs and goes, yeah. it's not a GP. No, Unidil, Unidil is. But honestly, though, through four rounds, are you impressed? Yes. But, not well. as impressed as I was with his Supercross, but I am impressed, and I think... I don't know. I want to see how the rest of the year goes. But he did better. So this is the first. Well, Hangtown was hot and Glen Helen was hot. But this is the first real hot and humid race. Yeah, and he still looked decent. So I mean, yeah, he was a little far off the pace. But I mean, he's. I, I think he's. Is he fourth or fifth in the points? Uh, uh, like he's in the top but top he's doing top. good. Yeah. He's doing good. He's he's putting himself in a good spot because how crazy the class is. So yep. continues to do good. He's there at the second moto. I mean. I'd like to see what he could do with another start like Glen Helen. Yep. I really like to. Um, and to be honest with you, I think Southwick might be the first time we see him get it overall because he can ride sand. Yep. So uh, I just want to see what he can do with a start like Glen Helen. If he can repeat it, uh, if he fades back to you know third or whatever. But I'm 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 impressed. Like he's doing good. So we'll see if he can continue to keep the ball rolling. Yep. Um, and then moving up. Now we're getting on to the podium here. Aaron Plessinger. The most uh, un. I can't figure that. I can't figure him out. Go ahead, but I can't figure him out. I mean, he went 3-3. No, but I mean the second moto charge from where he was. Oh, yeah, at the I end. I can't figure him out. About, but, yeah, at the end, he, like, literally he went faded back, to back. Yeah, to seventh, and then all of a sudden he's up there, like, closing on Amart and Zach for, uh, for like, third place. I can't figure him out. And ends up third in the second moto. Like, what? what? But then the first moto, he can get a start and he can fade back. Like, he did good, but, like, he goes backwards, and then, like, I just... He's the, another one. His fitness just... And, it's and, all over the board. His, his, fit, his fitness and his luck just blow my mind. It's like, like he literally, like, tightens up, doesn't control his breathing, hits the wall, and then all of a sudden he goes feel it at the end of the moto. But then there's times where he's loose at the beginning of the moto, and then all of a sudden just, like, I just, I don't get it There's with him. no consistency, period. I don't get it with him. I mean, great, he got third. Like, he's still keeping him close to the points, but... I don't understand him. I don't either. I don't get But he wrote good. He wrote good. It's a bag of cats with that guy. It I, is. I don't really know. He, he so. just needs to go to the 450. Yeah. So. so anyway, uh, second place overall on the day for the 250s, Zach Osborne. Speed looked really good that first moto. Really good. Had the visor goggle issue the second moto. Yeah, a little bit of a I dick move with the Amart thing. But, but see, it's... I don't know if he really went out to block him or if he was just trying to get his goggles off and like blew through that rut and was like shit. And then the way he looked to me almost looked like he was looking to be like yeah. shit is Alex railing the outside and just gonna boom mm -hmm. smoke me, you know? Yeah. Um, I'm not gonna fully go on no. board with the whole like he deliberately jumped out of the rut and yeah. went to the outside. Because he was messing with the goggles and the visor and everything else. so It's questionable, but... It's it's one of those things It's like only he knows what he really did and he, will he ever really admit it to anyone Probably outside not. of his inner circle? No. So I'm not going to jump on board with that. But again, in all the parody we've had here, still the most consistent guy in the 250 class, hence the reason he's got the red plate. Oh, yeah. No, I, I, I mean, I agree with all those points. He's definitely, definitely the most consistent. Uh, first moto was obviously the fastest. Um, second moto, once again, uh, I, I, I don't know. I mean, he's just, he's killing it. I mean, plain and simple, he's riding really good. Um, I still don't think he's the fastest guy outright. I know the first moto would uh, say that that's wrong, but uh, like he's, this, he's not. But again, the consistency. He's still, oh yeah, he's still consistent and stuff, and, the, and that's the thing. But now though, and I guess we could just transition into the overall winner, J Mart. Uh, I'm still picking J-Mart for the championship and stuff. J-Mart's found his groove. He has. He, he found his groove. He definitely looks a lot more like the older J-Mart. That uh, Geico Honda's working great for him. He, I mean, Whoever he, said Honda can't get started can shove it. Yeah, you can literally shove that right up your ass. <laughs> exactly, you because can. Because literally he is whole shotted like, what, four motos Yeah, plus something now, like that. Yep. And had decent starts to the other ones, so... The Honda, power-wise, is just fine. Um, Good job, Christian Kibbe. <laughs> but yeah, he's uh, he's definitely starting to look like the J-Mart of old. We're getting into some tracks now that he really likes, mm -hmm. and um, so yeah, this will be interesting to see if he can close that gap down and possibly get that red plate. I mean, maybe going into Millville, maybe coming out of Millville, he has that yep. red plate. We'll, we'll, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, you think that uh, you think that he's still in this championship? I mean, I know the points would say that, but I mean, a lot of people would look at like Zach just being consistent. But I think if Jamar now that he's fighting his flow and they got that chassis looking good yeah. and he's winning now that he's won one, I just oh man he's he's the scariest dude in the class when he's got confidence. Yep. Like I know Zach clear away. Not gonna disagree with any point the fact that he's been the most consistent. But Jamar's the guy that when he feels hey he's got that swagger going on like. 
he's the dude that can rip off, you know, four moto, four overalls in a row. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I still got J-Mar. I know it's a long season. Anything can happen. But uh, that's the J-Mar that we all kind of expected. Dude, he looked good that second moto. Yep. So... so. Yeah, I don't know. It'll be, uh, it's definitely interesting. Um, it'll be interesting to see if him and Forkner continue to hit, hit hook up. <laughs> yeah, every I know. Single, every single second moto this year, Forkner and J-Mart get together and freaking just push each other yep. right to the front. Yep, and even if they're not within like na like side by side or whatever, they're sitting somewhere on the same vicinity. So we'll see if that happens. And they happens. find each other. They yeah. do. They end up on the same corner together all the time. So Although Forkner was, Forkner and Cincerello were Mostly AC it was kind of a disappointment this weekend. He was. I think he crashed the second moto though because he was way back. He was like 16th or something at one point when I looked. So, but um, you know that comes down to consistency. Oh, yeah. And again, Zach's the only one in the class with consistency. So, yeah. who knows? Uh, that's pretty much. You got any other thoughts as far as the race goes before we uh, wrap this up here? Or? Well, if, if you not really, if you just want to go in for predictions for yeah, Muddy we Creek. can we can uh, we can go to predictions for Muddy Creek. So Muddy Creek 450 podium predictions. I'm gonna go with, and this is for overall. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go with Tomac, Baggett, and I'm gonna go with Coop. I got that. That's my. That's mine. That's my. Well, that was simple. No, but like, okay, <laughs> since we now we've got more time to talk yeah, about this shit. Yeah, well, a little bit the 250 class, but if the, since that's the case, we both agree on it. Uh, do you have a surprise for 450 class? Like, I don't know. No. A Weston Pike, uh, Dean Wilson. I don't no, know. I have no idea, honestly. It's because it, again, you take pretty much almost like second through, or I'm sorry, like fourth through 15, mm -hmm. and you throw them in a bag and you pick them out, and that's who finishes where yeah. on the weekend. I mean, you have everybody from Dean Wilson to Tickle to Josh Grant to Anderson to Seely. Sealy to Mar mm -hmm. to I mean, dude, no, it's all it's all over. The, I don't know. All right, well, I couldn't even begin to tell you. All right, podium picks for 250 then, since we got through that quickly. Oh, hell, I think you're gonna see a lot of the same. Uh, I think you're gonna see podium wise, AP, Zach, and J Mart, and I don't have any particular order. Uh, I'll go J Mart. Um, I got Zach in third. I think Fortner gets a second. Why? I don't know. I just have this feeling that right now he is not happy with how his season is going so far. We're only four rounds in. But I just feel that he is not happy with how his season's going far. Well, he's had bike problems two out of the four And rounds. that's what I mean. Like, I think he's just in this weekend. He didn't do, I mean, I think he was like sixth the first moto, which is okay. Yeah. I just have this feeling that he's, as much as I, it's going to contradict what I said at the couple rounds ago, I just think I'm waiting for it to happen. Like, he's got to have his breakout ride at some point. Yeah. And I feel that why not here? Or Red Bud. I just... So I'll say J-Mart, Fortner, and Zach, but I think that we pretty much see the same. It's I mean, it's pretty much been the same dudes from 1st to 10th. Yeah. So, no. oh, uh, how do you think Chase Sexton's going to do going forward? Today was rough. Today was rough. But he did make it inside the top 10, and the second moto, right? And he didn't. I don't know what he got the second moto. Oh. But he didn't break anything. Nope, he didn't crash, so we're good. We're good. I think he'll be fine. Um, think he gets in the top 10 in the moto next weekend? No, but I think come Red Bud, he's going to have something. Oh, my God, yes. Okay. I think, I think in two two weeks when we get to Red Bud, Sexton will have something, and it'll be phenomenal. Hopefully him and Forkner can uh, get together That would be in a awesome moto. if they got That a, would. If they both podiumed at a moto. Because I think Chase would go nuts. I think Chase will literally drive himself into the ground if he has a chance to beat Forkner. Oh, yes. So, oh, yes. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So, that's basically it for the show. Um couple of things just to finish this off here. Number one, if you haven't uh, gone to the Facebook page, make sure to go to the Facebook page at Moto Aftermath Show. We do live practice updates uh, as soon as practice is over. We'll be doing lots of live updates in two weeks at Redbud when we go there. Um, we also post videos, we post questions all the time for people, you know, who's your picks, whatever. Um, if we do go to local races, I try to post some stuff from there too. Uh, so it's lots of moto, 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 mostly pertaining to motocross and supercross in the U.S. Um, we do have some surprises coming up here. Hopefully as we get towards the end of the season, we're going to start doing some different things. So keep an eye out for mm -hmm. that. We are also now working on this. I'm trying this out. I'm not sure how it's going to work. We're Amazon affiliates. So I post Amazon links on there to some of the stuff I use on the Facebook page. I'll post some Amazon links below to like the camera I use, the microphone I use. You guys, if you want to help us out, click those links. We get a small slice It'd of that if you buy anything. 
Um, we would like to uh, try to go to a couple more races this year. Uh, again, bring you guys some better coverage. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so if you guys want to help us out, uh, make sure to click those links. Anything you buy on Amazon, we get a small slice of it, so it'll be great. So. Um, we might have some interviews for Red Bud too. Yes. I'm trying to work on some things. I'm trying to work on getting some guys and stuff. And maybe, uh, who knows, if we can't get the guys that I'm hoping to, which they're guys on a couple teams, um, maybe we'll interview some uh, local pros and maybe just some, you know, amateur racers from around. Just to, once again, like Travis always talks about content, and we are from Michigan. And that is one of it's a pro am. There's gonna be a lot of people there going heading to Loretta's and stuff. We're just gonna try to get some names out there and just give you guys that are not from around here a look at some of the guys or women that are uh, coming up from around the state. So hell yeah, we'll we'll see what we can do, guys. Yep. Make sure you're also you comment, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit the dislike button if you don't like if you don't like Justin's helmet he wears during the show. Hit the dislike button. We don't give it. If you want to just call Travis stupid, you could do that too. Uh, I I'm an idiot. It's not a big deal. He's kind of so. a jackass too, but it's uh, okay. But don't forget to new episodes of the Moto Aftermath show every Tuesday, um, all the way through the rest of the motocross season, and then I believe we're gonna probably cover Desnations on this oh, as yeah. well as um, Monster Cup. So and there might be an announcement at the Redbud National about a certain event that's going to happen next year too. So stay hopefully, tuned for that. And stay tuned for that. We'll break that live. If that yeah, happens. we will break that live. So anywho, uh, that's been the High Point review of the Moto Aftermath show here. Thanks for tuning in, and we will see you guys next week after Moto Creek. The dog toys. Dog toys. Dog noise. Dog noise. Who's the dog noise? I'm like the lamb with dog dick. So wow, why did that all of a sudden get really hot? Fucking great, bro. No, I can't see anything. It's, it's fucking great. Just stare in the camera. Don't look at the light. Be a professional at this. Right. God damn it. Alright. Hey, don't look at the light. I can't help it. Alright, we're gonna start over. I know, right? Okay. I'm blinded a little bit. Okay. Dick takes? Dick, dick takes.